From an SEO standpoint, meta titles and meta descriptions are one of the easiest and if not one of the most effective ways to boost your Shopify store's rankings and overall SEO performance in a matter of days, if not weeks. The meta title, which is called the page title in Shopify, if you scroll to the bottom of your page you're editing, um, also called the title tag commonly, it's actually the blue text title of the page that is displayed by the search engine when you or another user searches or like browses a SERP or a search results page. It's also the text that appears next to the logo on the browser tab once you've actually clicked on a website, whether it's yours, a competitor's, or somewhere you shop. So as you can imagine, pretty important. Anything with title, obviously pretty important. Having a good meta title is one of the easiest ways to boost your rankings immediately, assuming your target keyword is in there. Uh, we're gonna get into how that works, best practices, all that good stuff. I also wanna talk about meta descriptions. Meta descriptions are what falls directly under, like the, the smaller text that's like more sentence-like that falls under the meta title itself within the search result page. Meta descriptions will not directly improve your Shopify store's ranking as they are not a ranking factor. I'll touch on this later, but having a good meta description can have a very positive impact on your store's click-through rate indirectly, which will be a huge, huge, huge win for you. Today, I'm gonna be going over some meta title and meta description best Best practices, what to avoid, and I'm gonna go through some live examples on Google to give you guys an idea of what works and what can be improved. For those of you new to this channel, my name is Kai Cromwell. I'm the founder of Newsies, where a Shopify SEO agency that works with seven, eight, nine figure brands. We've helped them three, five, even in some cases, 12X their organic search traffic and more importantly, their organic search revenue with SEO. Without further ado, let's dive in. Let's get into page title best practices first. First, you wanna make sure that your title is fairly concise. Shopify gives you 70 characters of space for a meta title. Ironically enough, Google is only gonna display on average about 45 to 50, maybe 55 of those characters. However, even though Google may only show 45 to 50, 55 of them, it actually is still going to process and read all 70. So you actually can write up a 70 Shopify. Just be aware that when you go look at your page on the search result, all 70 characters probably will not be there. But because it processes it anyway, you can get some more keyword variants in there along or better call to action, whatever. Um, just be careful not to stuff it. The characters that don't get shown will still be likely considered in the actual ranking process. So worth using all the space. You want to include your primary keyword in the beginning of the meta title. This is called front loading. It should quite literally be the very first word. If you're on like a product page, collection page, you could maybe add the word shop, buy, or sale before it. But in any case, like it should be your very first part of the meta title because Google reads left to right, just as you do and I and everything. I generally defer to like the best combination for a meta title is the target keyword plus a call to action. Keep it easy to read, keep it organic, friendly, relevant to your brand style, like keep it similar. And again, make sure the target keyword is front loaded. Okay, that is like the biggest thing I want you to take away from meta title. There will be a direct correlation between you ranking higher if you have a meta title at the front or if you have a target keyword at the front of your meta title versus a target keyword at the end of your meta title or even the middle. I've tested this, other SEOs have tested this hundreds of times. I'm telling you, front loaded, save yourself trouble. Next up, you wanna make sure you're using modifier words and title correctly to match the search intent and intrigue potential buyers to get a click through. You want a high click through rate that is going to help you rank higher. So you, the other words outside of the third keyword are also equally as important. You need to use words that are powerful, emotion, get people to really like do something, like click right then and there. So on shopping pages, things like best, top, premium, affordable. You could go cheap if that's like kind of the brand right you're going. Um, work really well at capturing attention. Um, even things like on sale, shop, buy, discover, luxury, all that good stuff. They work great at matching purchase intent and getting users to actually click on your site as opposed to the site above and below you in search results or any other site on page one. If you're writing a blog, things like ultimate guide, expert guide, lead guide, um, even the year can be really helpful for getting clicks. Um, I think the most like common things to stop, like you wanna, you wanna think about like someone's looking at the search result page, you need to think they're scanning it very quickly and you need to find something that's going to stop their focal gaze, okay? So like percentages, caps on occasion, the year, like numbers and percentages and other symbols will like break up because like people see a lot of letters and they see a number and like, oh, like I should stop and look at that. Their eyes are naturally attracted. Okay, so think about, you wanna stop their scroll. For every single page, you wanna have a unique meta title, okay? No page on your website should have the exact same meta title and every page should follow the exact same template. Target keyword, call to action. And also like, if you're writing a blog, like, don't just overuse expert guide or ultimate guide every time. Okay, like use different cursed. And last but not least, this goes against a pretty common belief, but I tend to leave the brand name out of the meta title. Lately, I've noticed Google removes the brand name anyway. They're truncating even more meta titles. So I'd rather not add it in and use the extra space that I mentioned earlier for more keywords or a stronger call to action. Also, most brands, like I hate to be the one to say this, but like most brands are not big enough for people to recognize your brand name. You're not Amazon, you're not Apple, you're not Nike. You will be better off from an SE perspective if you simply load 
with more keywords and a better call to action in, as opposed to saving space for your branding. That's my honest opinion, and I stand by up to like brands doing probably $100 million a month, or $100 million a year, excuse me, on a meta description. It's important to note that meta descriptions, like I said, do not directly affect the ranking of your website. Okay, so having one or not having one will not directly impact or will not essentially help you rank higher or help or like hurt you to rank lower. Google has been public about this since 2009 when Matt Cutts said it on the Google Webmaster blog. That being said, writing an excellent relevant meta description can push people to click through on your website. A great meta description that produces a higher click through rate will boost your rankings and performance over the long run, especially since unlike the actual meta description itself, which is not a ranking factor, click-through rate is actually one of the most important ranking factors, probably in the top, I would say five, maybe 10, but it's probably top five. Okay, so let's look at some of the best practices to write meta descriptions, which you'll notice are gonna be very similar to best practices for meta titles. So the ideal length for meta description is somewhere between like 120, 160 characters, including spaces. This ensures your entire description will be visible in search results. Whatever someone searches, if you if that is also in your meta title, it will be bolted in your meta description like on the search result page. If it is bolded, that will have the same effect as having a number or a percentage or something else in your meta title because it will stop someone's gaze because they'll see bolded as and it's surrounded by a bunch of like planner text. Putting your target keyword in there, especially near the front, is going to do you a whole world of good at potentially boosting your click-through rate. Writing a meta description is a little bit different than writing like traditional SEO copy, which is very informative. Meta descriptions are a bit more like ad copy or like written marketing content, you really are trying to get somebody to click. Like that should be your sole function with that. Obviously the meta title is the goal too, but meta descriptions, you have a little bit more space. You can be a little more persuasive, influential, a little more salesy. Think about adding things like free shipping, on sale, X number of customer reviews, all that good stuff. Okay. Like all those things are valuable. All those things will help someone click on your page compared to someone else who does not have that. Lastly, and I do not say this to discourage you, Google rewrites, I think it's like 65 to 70% of all the meta descriptions on the internet. Anyway, don't feel bad if they do it. They're doing it to like three out of four <laughs> websites. That being said, I would only, I shouldn't say only, but I would focus on writing great meta descriptions for your money pages. So your products, your collections, and your homepage. I would not probably go and spend a lot of time on your blog meta description, especially if you're like, if you already have hundreds of them and you've not done it, I think that's pretty low ROI activity. I would go through all of your pages. All of your pages that rank on page one or like middle of page two and upwards. And I would actually spend time to write good ones. Um, and you'll probably notice a pretty solid effect within a few weeks. But if you've got a page rank in like position 50, no one's going to see that meta description anyway. So no point in rewriting or no point in like spending time on writing it. And then all across the board, like blog content meta descriptions, I'd say, like I said, pretty low priority. So so what to avoid here? Just a few things on meta descriptions that you should avoid. Don't keyword stuff. The character limit, if you're on Shopify, I'm pretty sure it cuts you off at like 320 characters, which is obviously much longer than the 120 to 150, 160 character limit that meta descriptions should kind of be within. I wouldn't write anywhere near 300 characters. I would probably try and stick around the 120 to 150 mark. If you write a lot after that, Google's not going to process it the same way it processes the meta title. So like, it's gonna be a waste of your time. In addition to that, if you write like deceptive or misleading content, like if you say we have free shipping, but you don't actually have free shipping, or you say something's on sale and it's not on sale, not a great look for you. People are going to click on your site and immediately bounce, which is going to indirectly hurt your rankings. I'd say like the biggest thing we see with meta descriptions when we onboard new brands at our agency, clients don't have, like brands don't have like a call to action of any kind, okay? They usually just let Shopify auto-populate the meta descriptions, so they may not even have a meta description to begin with, but even if they have written one, they definitely don't have a call to action, or some of them are just way too long. So shorten them up, add a meta description, be influential, get someone to click on your website. All right, so we're gonna look at a few keywords here. First one we're gonna look at is leather bags. Now, I'm just gonna give commentary on the actual meta titles and meta descriptions. I will say some are good, I will say some are bad. I also want you to consider that meta titles and meta descriptions are not the only things that play in this ranking, or in the rankings, okay? For example, this Buffalo Jackson one, genuine leather bags, it's okay. I think that there could be more here. I really like this second one, handmade leather bags made in the USA. This inspires me to click on it, okay? Comparably to genuine leather bags, all right? However, Buffalo Jackson, like the first one ranks higher, Maybe they got more links, like backlinks. Maybe they have more topical authority, higher click-through rate. Like there are so many things at play, okay? So I just wanna, let's forget the rankings for a second and let's just talk about the meta titles and meta descriptions, okay? So leather bags, genuine leather bags. I don't like it. I think they'd be more. I think if they had a free shipping offer or if it was made in the USA, they should say that, okay? If it was handmade, also say that. Also, I know for a fact, genuine is a lower quality of leather. Um, full grain and top grain are actually higher qualities of leather. So like if it were me and I knew that, I wouldn't click on leather on genuine leather because I know it's not as good, okay? But handmade, I'm pretty inspired by that, okay? Um, shop leather bags and leather goods, jackets online. This isn't a bad one. It's not even, I wouldn't even call it keyword stuffing because even though the word leather is in there a lot, it's pretty broken up because this is like their homepage. 
that's ranking you see they just have a they have an exact match domain which is why they're ranking so high for this if i just want to buy a leather bag i don't give a i don't care about leather goods or leather jackets like i'm just interested in the bags i'm probably not clicking here we go to ableclothing.com leather bags very basic there should be a call to action here real leather company leather bags should be called action here let's eagle leathers best sellers full grain leather handbags okay i said a second ago that full grain is the highest quality leather you can have i like that i also like best sellers I means people are buying these a lot okay for sure i'm interested in clicking on this one from kiana just bags absolutely not <laughs> this is so bad i would definitely write leather bags or like shop our leather bags available in x amount of designs or something like that okay um so right, we'll just throw some meta tops for there i'll get into meta descriptions on some of these other queries all right so let's look at chef knives so tons of sponsor results as you can see um, this first one from Westhoff. Um, I hate looking at this. I think I said earlier I don't like putting a brand name in. Clearly, they got it to work here. Probably part of the reason they rank number one. However, um, it definitely does stand out. Their brand name's in all caps. They have the umlau over the U, which definitely stopped my scroll. Um, official online store. I don't know how big of a brand this is. Maybe it's huge. Um, but I would probably, I'd probably drop one of the brand mentions for sure. Um, maybe just Chef's Knives or like premium Chef's Knives or... If they're made of a specific specific metal, I would probably put that in there. This Messermeister one, just chef's knives. Again, I think there should be a call to action. Saito knives, having Japanese kitchen and chef knives. This is huge. I, I like this one. I would click on this one. Okay, I actually just bought a knife myself. I didn't buy from Saito knives, but um, I did buy a Japanese kitchen knife. And for sure, I would click on this one. Okay, coloring more, chef's knives. I wouldn't click on it. This one from the New York Times. I... Though I am interested in shopping, I don't like to read affiliate articles all the time, but I would click on this one. I would, honestly, because I didn't like the first few, and maybe it's just me being picky as an SEO, but I'd click on this one because it would definitely help me narrow down my choices much faster. Next up here, men's wallets. So Amazon, or CNN ranks first, best men's, best wallets for men in 2024, tried and tested. This is a banger, that a title, okay? Super good, super good. Like, I don't even, I don't even need to read anything else because I know I'm gonna click on this result and read through it. Let's look at the meta description. A pool of 17 wallets that run the gamut from traditional bifolds and minimalist metal card holders. Each is worthy of consideration. This is a phenomenal meta description. Shout out to whoever wrote this at CNN. There's obviously so many types of wallets now. Like these used to be, a, everyone used to have a leather wallet. Now there's like metal, there's ones on the back of your phone. There's like the minimalist ones, okay? It's so like they have essentially covered every single type of wallet and they have 17 of them that they think are worthy in this year. And they each said each is worthy of consideration, which means like I'm going to even have a tough choice picking between all 17, but at least I know I'm looking at the best 17. Great meta description here. Jack George's Leather Wallets for Men, Lifetime Warranty. I like the meta title. Lifetime Warranty is for sure going to get me to click on it. As long as I don't read the meta title, this is tough to read, okay? Um, I'm searching for men's wallets. It just has men's other wallets, and then it gets into all the different kinds, and it just looks like it's pretty hard to read, honestly, like... Bifolds, billfolds, hipsters, weekenders, ID wallets, trifolds, travel wallets. I hate that section. I do like the handmade lifetime warranty part though. I'll give them that. Men's wallet from Nordstrom. This is fine. It's pretty basic, I'd say. Um, I think find a great selection. I would probably do like shop shop our favorite men's wallets and card cases at Nordstrom.com. Find leather wallets, money clips, and more. Shop now. I would probably drop like shop top brands, okay? Amazon, men's wallets. So like they don't even write meta descriptions. This just got pulled from the top product, I bet. So like this isn't even a good meta description. Also like if you don't write a meta description, Google's gonna create one for you or it's just gonna source your page, your, the first like uh, 150 characters out of your page content. Fossil, this is a good one. You can see they obviously wrote more than like the suggested character limit, but I like it. All right, let's get on to one more here. Ergonomic keyboards. Top result here um, is from our our things. Um, four best ergonomic keyboards fall 2024. First off, fall 2024, it's relevant, okay? If you do like product reviews or affiliate, anything, like if you're doing seasonal stuff or monthly stuff, I'm for sure going to click on it because I know it's the most relevant to to me right at this moment in time, okay? I was looking at new like travel credit cards last week and it literally said October of 2024 and it was like October 1st I was looking at. It's like, that is really good. I'm for sure clicking on I, I did click on that link and I actually ended up buying or actually I'm getting a credit card through that link, okay? PC Mag, best ergonomic keywords for 2024. I like it. I don't like it as much as fall because it's just, it's just a bit more general. And had the fall one not been there, I would have really liked this one. But fall was there, and so now I'm inclined to click on the, the more relevant one. This one from Kinesis Ergo. You've got Kinesis keyboards, mice, foot pedals, keypads. Not bad. Um, I think they could probably put their target keyword up a little earlier. Amazon, again, this is getting sourced from their products. Not a good example. Perix, ergonomic keyboard and mice fine I, there's more space here though for characters i would do something like shop now or 
like they literally offer free 30 day returns they should put that in there or free delivery they have that too they should put that in there 100% keyboard and vertical mouse and slim and split design fine i think it would be 100% ergonomic keyboard again i'm being nitpicky but that's the point here okay new york times best ergonomic keyboard this meta description sucks i would imagine well okay this first sentence sucks this first sentence is almost like so stupidly simple that it sucks um, but then you read the next sentence and you're like oh great and now i know which one is the best one because they've already told me so now i'm going to click on it to see why it's the best one hats off to the copywriter here pretty good work honestly that concludes our deep dive into meta titles and meta description best practices make sure to follow and connect with me on twitter and linkedin i share new findings and strategies that are working for our clients on there all the time also have a full five-hour seo course plus community um, that goes more in depth on how we're able to add thousands of dollars to our clients and are consistently 50 members in as of yesterday looking to get to the next 100 so join now while the content is still coming out and if you're a brand looking to get off the page as hamster wheel in the seven eight nine figure a year range and make two to three even five ten x like i mentioned earlier organic search revenue from your shopify store make sure to book a free discovery call with me find the link in the description below i'll see you in the next video peace